I would like farmers to think about the many opportunities we have to manipulate where pests are, especially insect pests, are establishing within the crop. That these critters are very smart. They don't choose their the plants that they infest randomly. They select certain ones that they prefer better than others. And if we study this very carefully, we can actually manipulate them to go to certain parts of our paddock. For instance, as I was talking about in my presentation, we have reasons to believe that fertilizer, by fertilizing in particular ways and in different ways in different parts of the paddock, we can maybe make sure that if, they, if this becomes a year with high pest infestation, where they will occur first is around the perimeter by under fertilizing with potassium along the perimeter. In that way, we can make sure that that's where they establish first and therefore they're gonna be easier to, to detect. So we will be able to detect them at a very early stage and therefore also come in early with a, with a high spray volume and a high dosage and get the job done. So it's about understand, so, I, so the take home message here is these critters are smart, but we can be even smarter and we can use our knowledge about what they like and what they don't like to our advantage. Potassium is a, is a very important macronutrient for the plant. We know that and we also know that soils in many soils here in, in uh, Western Australia are potassium deficient. So a lot of farmers are already applying a lot of potassium as part of their management strategy. What we're coming up with and what has also been supported in the literature is that if a plant is potassium deficient, it accumulates nutrients in its leaves and that makes it very suitable for a pest to start chewing or feeding on this plant. So if we can provide it with enough potassium, we can actually avoid that accumulation of these nutrients and that makes the plant less attractive. So we believe that fertilizers can be used in a smart way to reduce the uh, susceptibility of the plant to pests. But there are other nutrients that also need to be studied. It's not just potassium. We also know, for instance, that nitrogen and phosphorus, if you apply a lot of that, that can actually make the plants more attractive. So some nutrients we can use, we can underdose and therefore make, or we, can, we have to provide enough of it for the, for the plants to be not attractive and other nutrients we have to maybe cut back on. So, as part of a nutrient management strategy, which is something that has been talked a lot about here at this conference, we also think that, that this approach, managing your nutrients, can use, can be, should be considered not just for maximizing the yield, but also for reducing the risk of pests becoming inf infesting our crops. If we can minimize the risk of pests occurring in the first place, then we don't have to spray as often. And if we can, so one of the things we have been talking about at this conference was also, well, can we monitor where the pests, how the crop is doing, where we are likely going to have infestations through use of drones and other, other machine vision systems. That's another theme of this, of this conference that has been um, mentioned by a lot of, of presenters. Um, so we can do that, but also, as you just mentioned, applications we have we have developed a, a phone app and a website that is briefly described on this poster where we basically want to give growers an opportunity to maximize the coverage that they can get if they're going to be spraying so this 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 phone app and this website is set up so that for instance the night before you can go you can log into your little account you can put in what spray volume you're going to be putting out, putting out tomorrow? Is it going to be 70, 80, or 90 liters per hectare? What are you going to are you going to put an adjuvant in there? How fast are you going to be driving? What nozzle size are you going to be using? And some weather parameters. And then, if you click calculate, that will come out with a prediction of what coverage you're going to be getting. And you can then use this to sort of figure out: Well, should I be using another nozzle? Should I, if I can wait, should I spray in two days instead of tomorrow? Should I maybe put in a little bit more water or should I drive a little slower? This is all about making sure that the spray coverage is as good as possible because we all know that if we don't get enough coverage, we are not going to get a good, good bang for our buck. We have invested the fuel, we put the man hours, we're going to drive out there, 
we're going to compact the soil by driving on it. We want to make sure when we get out there that, it, that the chemical actually gets to the ground. I'm very pleased to hear that the, the Ministry of Agriculture was mentioning the installation of these new weather stations because this really, here in WA, that, that really is a, is a very, very important piece of this, of this, how to improve our management, is to have access to more data, having access to weather data, having access to soil data, having access, and, and of course, the, all the other types of data that, that farmers need. This is definitely important. And then having the tools that can then the, and when, with tools, I mean websites and phone apps and, and, and uh, grower recommendations, uh, other, other tools that we can use to then use this information and convert it into to management practices and, and decisions on how should we, when should we spray, how should we spray, how should we plant, and all that kind of stuff. I will be as bold as, as this. I will actually say that I think uh, drone technology is... Well, it's interesting to look at drone technology because after Second World War, we had a lot of pilots who suddenly got unemployed. We had a lot of chemists who had been developing toxins to kill each other with, to kill the enemy with. So we had learned a lot about chemistries. We had a lot of airplanes and we had a lot of skilled pilots who were willing to, to fly under very difficult conditions. Well, that led to the development of a whole new industry called crop dusting. Now we, uh, 70 years or yeah, almost 80 years later, we have a very similar scenario where the military has spent a lot of money on developing unmanned aerial vehicles. And all that technology is now being, there's a lot of spin-offs of this technology and that also includes agriculture where we are now seeing that farmers who are managing 15, 20,000 hectares and therefore obviously cannot have ears and eyes everywhere can now use this technology to have machines do the inspection for them and help the scouters, the agronomists, do a much better job because they can't go to all these, these, all these paddocks either. So, so, but we can send out machines, we can send out these drones, have them collect information, have it come back, have computers to analyze it for us and then guide us to where and when action is needed, whether that being applications of fertilizer, whether it being uh, replanting, whether it being uh, occurrence of, of, of different pests. I think it, it all fits in there and so it, it's very, very exciting. I also want to point out, and I think that's very important, that as a university professor, it also gives me the tools to go out and sell agriculture in a completely different new context because Students are going to be very interested in this, playing with these toys and being part of developing phone apps, playing with drones and all that. So, that, so it's also a, a very, very exciting because it allows us to really engage young people and show them that agriculture is, is much more than plowing and welding. There's a, there's a lot to it and, 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 and I think it, it will be a hook we can use to, to really make sure that, that we get the next generation of scientists and growers into this uh, industry.